Hello and welcome to Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes, where we speak to the best of the bronies and discover what makes them tick. Today, we have a man from Inverness interviewing a woman from Glasgow. Is the battle of Scottish accents. <laughs> She's an artist and live streamer who has more projects on the go than I've ever completed. So let's hope I actually finish this episode and don't die halfway through. It's, <laughs> it's great to welcome Joe, a.k.a. Kuai Desu Desu, to the show. Joe, how are you doing? How are Thank you, doing? you for having me. Oh, no problem at all. You, you doing all right? Yes, I'm, I'm fine. Yes. Ah, that's good. That's good to hear. I just, I've got to be honest with you, I don't know quite where to start with you because you've got so many projects on the go and so many odds and ends you do. I just don't know quite where to start. I mean, do you happen to have any tips for me? It's quite um, hard uh, on the net having so many things to do. So um, it might be easier, like, even to, you know, plan before doing it all or instead of, like, kind of going all this way with, um, pfft, no organization organization skills. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, of course I've got it organized, but I'm always curious to see kind of what particular projects you um, do the most because I know you've recently done a Star Seedlings, which is a, a art project you've been doing on a uh, Facebook, and I know you've got the Deviant Art and the Red Bubble page as well. And yes. I know you happen to do uh, pictures for Brony Scott, and you do like you seem to have your and you've done a lot of collaborations as well. So it seems that like you've got your hands in quite a lot of pots. Yeah, um, I think mostly because um, I wasn't, um, I started in the Sonic community first and then kind of moved on when My Little Pony became my thing and um, I've still got my fan base that is Sonic based and then I've got my, like, then I've got people that are into My Little Pony so I decided, like, you know, to, um, make other accounts so that when people were wanting to see a certain type of art they could click on that and say well oh this is joe's fan art so i'm going to go look at that or this is joe's original stuff so i'll go and look at that so you've been doing art for quite a while then Mm -hmm. yeah i first went on to deviant art on 2004 oh craig we're going a fair bit back then yeah um, I had a different name then as well, and everything was on it. But I noticed that a lot of things were. I would get lots of um, comments and favourites on my Sonic stuff and nothing else, which is why there's so many different accounts now. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of stuff for Brony Scott and things like that right now. So that, that that's my main thing at the moment. You were talking there about the pictures you've done for Brony Scott. I mean, um, how do you feel about the the local Scottish Brony community then? Considering that you've you know you've obviously got an involvement in the sort of the main con that's happening down here. I love it. They're so nice. Um, every Saturday, the Glasgow Bronies meet up and we just do loads of things. Some go and play the card games. Some just um, sit and play games. And um, we go to this um, little cafe called Geek Retreat. So it's not just bronies that are there, there's like, you've got all types of geeks there. They've made us very welcome. And because they were so friendly, um, it made me want to become an admin of that group. They're all lovely and just, it's great, like, fitting into a community and people are so nice. Um, I've never had that before. So has that, um, I mean, I know you've been part of other fandoms. I know you've been part of like Sailor Moon, Street Fighter, Sonic the Hedgehog you've mentioned. Are the communities for them, at least as far as you've been a part of them, quite different then from the My Little Pony community? I have noticed there is, uh, there is a difference. The only time I felt welcome in the Sonic communi- community was when I went down for a convention called Summer of Sonic. They're like... That convention made me just, like, that's what makes me go to do conventions and things like that now, because that convention was great. It was small. It was kind of like Brony Scott was last year. It was was small, but, like, you could talk to everyone, and everyone was so nice. And I wasn't used to that, like, especially on the internet. Yeah, because I I know the internet, in terms of, particularly in the fandoms, there there are quite harsh like they can be quite the corners of the community that can be incredibly harsh either to newcomers or to anything that kind of is outside their perceived notion of what the fandom should be 
at this moment, like I have noticed that with uh, and which is unfortunate is the Steven Universe fandom. I mean, some of them are like I know loads of Steven Universe fans. They're absolutely lovely, but there's been a lot of drama about like them not wanting bronies to be part of it. Which a lot of my friends are like, well, we like Steven Universe and we like My Little Pony, so what do we do? <laughs> so, I mean, you quite like the Brony fandom. I mean, how did you come to be a, a fan of the show then? It happened just randomly. One day I was on DeviantArt and I started seeing these um, My Little Pony pictures. And I was looking at them and I'm like, oh, that's not what I grew up with. And I saw more and more and I'm like this is kind of weird where's this all coming from and then one of my friends who was like kind of into it which really surprised me because he was a guy was saying you need to watch this it's amazing I'm like are you sure are we are we talking about the same thing here you're actually liking my little pony and he's like yeah no you need to go watch it you need to go watch it so I watched it and I was completely hooked. Well, what's quite interesting there is the kind of the same response I had in some respects is the idea that, you know, obviously it's a, the show is designed for little girls, you know, to sell plastic toys. You know, that's the kind of base knowledge. But but the fact that there are so many guys who happen to enjoy the show, and I've, I've heard that commented quite a few times, that it, seems, that it seems to be people find this quite unusual. Like, what do you think about that? See, I actually think it's a great thing that they've made a show for both males and females and it's like it's not just um, kids show all about fashion like they normally do for little girls because um like some of the things they've got for little girls like brats and stuff like that i think is quite shocking and like for them to make a show that does not like insult people's intelligence i think is it's great that the world's moving in that way that um, little boys can go and buy My Little Pony toys now and maybe like e- even later on little girls can go and buy say boy toys later on there won't be a gender specific toy range or gender specific cartoons it would just be cartoons and I think I think that's what the world needs now definitely it seems to be slowly Going that way, and it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, I love how the show is, you know, like I said, it's an incredibly intelligent show in terms of it doesn't actually treat the audience like idiots. And mm-hmm. it has a very positive message to it as well, which is, I think at this point as well, is something that we need right now. Yes, it is something we need. And uh, obviously you've been doing a bit to kind of help along, I mean, as part of the fandom. I mean, I know that you've, um, you kind of, you mentioned how you kind of discovered the art for the web and so on but did how did you come to then do art for the my little pony community was it just because you've been doing art anyway and decided to do it or was there any kind of inspirational person you saw i think i just was like you know what i like that character i need to draw them and i think one of my um my recent ones was pinkie pie i, I mean pinkie pie is my favorite i i don't know why she just is my favorite and just I was like I need to draw them they're just the art style is just so pretty oh definitely I mean the the show has a very distinctive style to it and I've noticed that in terms of the the art that people in the community do and yourself because I've noticed that um, most of your quite a lot of your art is I suppose what you'd call like traditional line art you know not done on tablets and so on yes I was quite surprised I've for the longest time I've drew so much digital stuff and like when I started getting pro markers and things like that, I was like, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see how this looks traditionally. And I was just surprised it just looked so much better. And since that, I've just been doing a lot more traditional work. I mean, I know you've done the traditional work for the My Little Pony art as well, but I know you've um, you've got this project Star Seedlings, uh, yes. which has come up recently. I mean, can you tell us a bit more about that? Um, the Star Seedlings, I was inspired by um, Lord and Faust. I've always wanted to do like fantasy art, so I wanted to incorporate something cute with fantasy because I used to draw a lot of um, fairies and angels and things like that when I was younger, and it was just you know it was just something to like mix them all together. Yeah, that's really where that comes from. And I know from the 
the art that you're doing for the Star Seedlings project, I know that um, part of that is uh, connected to a red bubble that you've got as well. Yes, as. Uh, is that a new venture in terms of uh, like either selling art or the Star Seedlings being on that? Um, I did have a red bubble beforehand. However, on that red bubble that I had, there was a lot of um, fan artwork. Unfortunately, I did get a cease and desist. So that's why my new red bubble has original artwork. It's just, it's a little warning for people out there as much as like, you know, I mean, I would love to sell my My Little Pony artwork on red bubble, but at the same time, you know, you need to respect that the creators out there, they've made it. And, um, you know, if they tell you to take something down, you need to take it down. No, that's that's fair enough, but at least you've you've learned from that, and you're actually you know you're you're using this new project to kind of replace that on Redbubble and come up with something new, but based on it, or you know that inspired by it rather, I suppose. I just, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I'm not. Uh, I mean, I haven't used Redbubble myself, and I haven't had the opportunity to ask people who have used it before to sell art about it. I mean, um, how do you? I suppose then, um, how do you find? Uh, it is a platform for selling your art. I mean, how do you market yourself, and is it a particularly is it good for supplementary income or? It's um, I haven't really um, got any sales, but it is like the last the last account I did. But you know, it was it was like once a month type thing, which I'm quite happy with. Just need to, it's one of those waiting games to see if it all if people want to buy stuff or not. So during like a, it would be something that would be good. If you were to market yourself enough and you had the right sort of sales as a good kind of sort of supplementary income to what you're currently doing? Yes, it, it would be good. And uh, where do you see, like, if you know, if you have the opportunity, where would you like to see that grow in terms of you and your art and your ability to sell it? I'm just quite happy if, like, people just like what I draw. So I, I'm quite happy if people like what I draw and I'm quite happy if, like, people want to buy stuff. But at the end of day like it's more of me just you know oh I want to draw this and it's um like payment to me is not like a big thing right now it would be wonderful if people loved them that much they want to buy I mean that would be such a confidence boost but you know it's more of a oh I just want to draw this and see how it goes well hopefully fingers crossed a few people will come your way thanks to this or in the future I mean certainly from the art I've seen I mean I know I mean, I enjoy it, and I know for a fact that our producer absolutely loves your art. So who knows? There might be a potential in the future to, you know, boost your way up there. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, that makes me really happy that both of you like my art, so... We've got all our hoofs crossed for you. <laughs> uh, I, I want to ask you a wee bit about your... Um, it's not even your deviant art; it's your username. Uh, I'm going to make the pronunciation horrible on this. Uh, what is it? Is it Kawaii Desu Desu? Yeah, you, you nearly, yeah, you got it spot on. Kawaii Desu Desu. Yes, that username. And when I made that username, I was going through a, a bit of a, a trolling stage. <laughs> so <laughs> I made that username round about the time that a lot of people were making Japanese usernames on DeviantArt. And I had made that name and then underneath that as my little um my little saying I had Japanese username equals page views. <laughs> I know I remember seeing that and I just thought, okay, I have to at the very least mention this. Because mm-hmm. it's oh. quite because it's quite an intriguing name, but I, I do like the sort of like you said, it is quite a sort of trolling thing to put at the bottom just go like, yeah, I've got a Japanese username, come flock to me. Yeah. <laughs> and like on your DVR, I mean, I've noticed that you've um, like we've already talked about some of the many fandoms you're a part of. But I have to ask a wee question, just pure in the basis of some of the art I've seen, because I know you've done Street Fighter art. And you mentioned coming into the sort of art community and the fandoms through Sonic initially. Are you a gamer? I am. However, I don't have a console. I I do have a Steam account. I have a computer that doesn't like playing the games. But, you know, the only thing I have on me right now is a DS, and that makes me cry. I so want, like, a Wii U or a PlayStation 4, or, you know, I just, I'm, I'm so upset. I can't get to play games. 
well, at least you got a DS, but I mean, I can't just say I love the fact that there's someone out there who wants a Wii U. Because I keep trying to get people to buy them and play them because I feel so alone. <laughs> I want Splatoon. You will nice. love Splatoon. Splatoon is great. It's like all my friends are talking about it and I'm like, but I want to play it. Stop talking about it. You're making me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I know. It's like just before that game came out, it seemed to be coming up. You know, everyone was talking about it. It was just immense. But uh, certainly, I mean, uh, who knows? I mean, hopefully, the opportunity, like maybe a Brony Scots or something like that, because I, I keep, I'm, I'm not too familiar with the cons, but I have heard that some of the other cons, they case you have some sort of gaming events and things like that. It's funny you said that because recently, um, uh, um, Anthony, um, the main organizer asked um, the artist team to design um, a character for one of um, the people who I think they're organising a game bit for it. Oh, right. I need the details for this when it comes out because I am so determined to play some games there. It's going to be my first con and it's uh, I would absolutely happily play some games with someone if I got the opportunity because it would just be so much fun. Well, I'll double check with him. I'm pretty sure he means video games and not the card game. So oh, that's me. Video games are my. I have yet to play the card game. I've been meaning to, but I'm not the expert. Our producer is. Video games are my forte. So hand me a controller. I will be more than happy to have a game. I, I would make the convention like like 100 times better as well. I mean, it is good the way it is, but just I. Just can't wait. I can't wait for Brony Scott. <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, it's looking like it's going to be a great event. I mean, I know, um, I think Sketchy Sounds is one of the, the guest manager for this. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like all the Bronies are just coming together now just for the, you know, the big con. It's just like, it's going to be an amazing event. I'm, you know, I'm sure it's going to go really well. Yeah, like, um, James is doing, um, his drawings are, are amazing for, for this year. Like, that poster he drew recently for it is just so pretty. I, I'm so envious of his um, digital skills. <laughs> oh, I know. I've seen him do uh, live streams and it's just like, you know, I'm envious of anyone who can do art because I just have no ability to actually do art at all. So it's just, you know, anytime I see his artwork or other people's artwork, I just kind of, you know, sit there drooling. <laughs> but uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourself, Joe. Yes. Yes, I have. Thank you very much for um, talking to me. And uh, just before we wrap up, Joe, uh, where perhaps you can tell us where we can find you on the web. You can find me on um, DeviantArt, which is quiet-desu-desu. Um, I have a Facebook page, which is Aura Pandora Arts. Um, I have another DeviantArt, which is Aura Pandora, which is all my original stuff. And I think we'll leave it there because I think I'll be going on and on and on. So... <laughs> Well, you can send us any links you've got and we'll put them all down in the description below so you'll be able to see all of our art and all the projects she's doing. You'll be able to follow her for yourself. Please feel free to get in contact with us. We do have a Facebook page at Howland Bronies. We have a YouTube channel called Howland Bronies. You should know about this by now. You are watching a video on it. If you want to get in contact with us, of course, there's the comment section. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. And of course, in the about section, there is an email to contact us. So if you're just a fan of the show, want to tell us what you like or what you don't like, or if you're a content creator in the community and like to be interviewed, feel free to pop us a line. We're interested in anyone who would be, you know, would like to be part of the show, whether it's getting volunteered, being interviewed, or just wants to say hi and talk about how nice my hair looks. I mean, I will take anything at <laughs> I will take anything at this given point. It's all good as far as I'm concerned. But thank you all for watching. And the final word from Midnight Scribe, as always, is please subscribe.